All right, welcome to the secrets of the scales as it relates to the chromatic scale. Now, I will be honest with you, um, the chromatic scale doesn't have any secrets necessarily as far as where things go, um, tendency tones and things like that, like we looked at in the, uh, the secrets of the scales for the other, for the major and the minor modes, but this is more of an issue of vocabulary. So if you're not familiar with the scale or how we do solfege, this will be really important for you to know. Luckily, there are some rules that hold fast for, for the most part, for most of the time here, when dealing with these uh, scales, uh, with the chromatic scale. So let's start. I've already put down here in the chromatic scale what we know. I've put down uh, the diatonic notes, or the notes from the major scale that we are already familiar with. And you will notice in the chromatic scale, it's similar to the melodic minor scale in that it has one form ascending and one form descending. It doesn't have to be this way, but generally, and this is something for you to consider in the future when you're arranging parts or when you're writing your own music, when you are writing an ascending line that has some kind of a chromatic component, whether it be a chromatic scale or just a couple of accidentals, you always, uh, you generally are going to want to write the notes so that they appear to be ascending, okay? R rather than writing an F followed by a G flat, followed by a G, it's generally better to have an F followed by an F sharp, followed by a G. Of course, there are lots of exceptions, but um, raising things, sharping things makes you think, higher since you're going up, and conversely, flat things makes you think lower going down, which is the direction that you're moving. All right, so what do we do with these sharps? Okay, we do use a fully chromatic solfege system, movable though still. So beginning with the um, syllables that we already know from major mode, let's find out what we need to do to sharp them. Okay. When you raise something, when you add a sharp, or depending on what key or, or, or key signature you're using, when you raise a note, you will always do one thing to the syllable. One thing to the syllable. You will add the vowel sound e. Okay. The initial consonant is going to remain the same. So d, r, n, f, s, l, t will remain the, the same. The initial consonant sound, but the vowel sound a. Uh, O, A, E, E will, uh, will change. And it will always change the same way. We will always use the E, E sound. And I'm going to represent that with the letter I. So Do will become D, Re will become Re, Mi is already a half step from Fa, so we don't worry about that. Fa will become Fi, Sol will become, oops, excuse me, Sol will become C. Which is why, in case you were wondering why we say T for the leading tone instead of C, as they do in some systems, because this is C. La becomes Li, then T, and Do. It's almost as simple and cut and dry descending, in the descending portion of the chromatic scale. You already know uh, three of the, uh, of the tones, or three of the chromatic syllables from minor mode. You know that uh, Lord T is Te, Lord La is Le, Lord Mi is Me. So you will guess correctly that you will do to the lower things what you did to the upper part of the scale just with the A sound instead of the E sound. And I'm going to represent that with the letters A, Y. So here's Do. T will become Te. La becomes Le. Sol becomes Se. Fa is a half step. Mi becomes May, and here is where we run into a problem. Re already has that sound represented in this case by an E. So this is the one exception to the rule. Re becomes Ra. Ra. All right, let's go ahead and play and sing through this. Okay, I will do the ascending scale first, then the descending scale. Ready, go. Do. scale. 